Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars and I'm here in the Joshua Tree uh, National Park and um, I thought I'd talk a little today about the nature of sexual feelings uh, on the astral plane. Um, as you may know if you're a student of Arthur Powell's com com compilations of the Theosophical texts, um, the astral plane is a medium through which our astral matter can sense emotions much more directly than can we in our physical form. And the result of that is that emotions felt on the astral plane are very vivid, very um, strikingly vivid compared to anything that's experienced while in form and feeling form. So uh, when people begin to expand into the astral plane during this process of the awakening, one of the first things that happens is they become semi-somnambulantly aware of the the uh, passions of the astral plane, uh, which, principle among which is sexuality. Of course there are other uh, let's concentrate on sexuality right now. Now in the lower triangle, the lowest three chakras up to the navel point, old style, um, the energies, the energies of the astral chakras are uh, mostly emotion. Uh, and very little thought. So the thought forms of the lowest three chakras in the astral plane uh, are mainly what they call kama rather than manas. As you may know, um, thought forms are made of an emotional component and an um, intellectual or thought component. So they're known as kama manas. But depending on the chakra, there are various proportions of kama and manas in the thought form. Now in the very lowest chakras, it's mostly emotion, kama. And in the very highest chakras, it's mostly pure thought, manas. So, um, down in the lower chakras, the second chakra, the gears go pretty slowly. You know, the, the wheel turns pretty slowly down there. And that lets uh, the relative largeness of intense feelings of sexuality um, penetrate that chakra. That's how I would visualize it. Uh, further, the, the more the uh, sensuous and the less sentient thought forms are, the more they connect with the unconscious thought cloud of the world. The first chakra, fear of death, desire to survive, um, to desire to ground to earth, uh, is the most connected to the unconscious thought cloud of the world, what some call the collective mind, mm, this, the collective subconscious or unconscious mind of humankind. The second chakra is very close to that in lack of sentience, in lack of individualization, as uh, Powell termed it. Now the word individualization is different from the word individuation. The uh, word individuation, I find, 
is a psychological word. It's used in um, psychological therapy, and it's very, very different in meaning from the word individualization, which is a word from the arcane text that means that you are fully differentiated uh, from other human beings. You're not like the, um, uh, the nature spirits and the animals. The, the nature spirits, which are in, mostly in the astral realm, I think, well, as far as I know, and the, the beasts and animals and like that on Earth, which are physical, but which all have group souls. So the soul of, of the fully individualized human being consciously knows and is spiritually adept at the, the understanding that it is, exists separate from all other human beings in relationship with, in alignment with, and in harmony with the will, the, the heart, and the mind of God. Um, but when a person is striving towards that understanding, there is some degree of lack of individualization in their, um, in their first three chakras. What's known as the, the, uh, the gut brain, sometimes the um, vital body in other texts, and the lower triangle in yoga. So how this lack of individualization or greater admixture of kama in the thought forms manifest as we begin the awakening process is as almost uh, a waking dream or something that we experience over and over again in the dreamtime realm as we sleep and finally wake up one day and catch just the tail end of what's going on. And from that point on, we start to understand that we've been logging on to the desires of all the other humans in the world, and also perhaps of ghosts on the astral plane, and nature spirits on the astral plane assist in that. So, um, so in our hearts, as we dream, as we lie dreaming, we may feel um, bonded to one other, chastely bonded to one other human being. And that is the, like, um, the, um, the pedestal, uh, the mental pedestal that allows us to, to dream of sexuality, this bonding with one other person. But in the lower gut, in the gut brain, what's really happening is uh, kind of in, uh, it's kind of like um, stirring soup. There's just thought forms and especially emotional thought forms from many, many different people joining in serendipitously at the same time in this like cooking of the soup or stew of each person's um, sexual desire, you know. So the first thing to do is to wake up to this. Wake up to the collective nature of that desire. And then if our intention is to be a noble human being and a great yogi and a wonderful spiritual adept, then the next thing to do is to begin to train our desire elemental, uh, the being the, that directs the activity of the lower three chakras, which has somewhat a mind of its own, according to Arthur Powell, and which, uh, which can go off in its own direction if it's not, if it's not carefully nurtured told that it's loved and trained to do what the, the mind and the spirit, the higher mind and the spirit wanted to do here on earth. What we want to accomplish as souls 
what our soul mission is here on earth. So in the ideal situation for the awakened person, the uh, desire elemental does the bidding of the higher mental body and of spirit, you know. Uh, it's relatively easy to undertake this step, but it's a very difficult process of awakening a little, falling back asleep, awakening a little, falling back asleep, and so on for years and years before we, we reach the determination to, to do that training. Um, it reminds me of when I see people slowly waking up, which is happening all over Earth today, it reminds me of people doing the, the breast stroke. You know, the breast stroke where um, part of the breast stroke involves reaching up for air, for a big gulp of air. That's like waking up for a moment. And the next instant, your head is underwater, and that's like falling back asleep for a minute. And over and over again, during this awakening process, and every awakening process, our souls do that. And I would say, too, that awakening is a little like, it's like my cat when I wake her up and she wants to be cat napping. If I, if I touch her just a little bit when she's sound asleep, she gets a very cranky look on her face. And uh, people do that too, I think. If they're, if they're sh shaken or wake, woken just a little bit before they're ready to be awoken, they do that too. So there's a certain amount of, of like slight crankiness. And uh, there's also this repetitive process that can be, actually it's, it's not easy for any of us, even though we've all volunteered, and in many cases done all this once before. And so, being more awake, there comes a stage when you flip over on your back, like you're swimming and you flip over on your back, and then you're doing the backstroke, and your head is always above water, and you're always awake. You might get a little water splashed on it, your head, during the process, you might be slightly, uh, slightly asleep and you might have to shake your head to get the water off. But in, in general, there comes a point where, where you know. You know about the sexual drive. And you're able to channel that drive for co-creation of the new reality. And, and not just for, um, for the unconscious, uh, like... Um, tumblings of the tide of the unconscious thought cloud of the world. So I'm talking about this because right now there are a lot of people waking up to that. So I thought I'd offer what has happened to me in the last 16 years in hopes that your path will be easier than mine was. There is, I would add, uh, at the moment when individualization begins to step forth as a goal for, for our souls, at the moment of that precise moment of awakening, there comes a great longing to return to the unconscious state with regard to sexuality. Um, yeah. uh, you know, I understand, I remember. I remember that great longing. Um, I would offer that what awaits us is far more wonderful than that. But it, it, I would validate that it is very difficult to set that aside. Talk to you later.